Hello, everybody, and welcome to Residence Arcade, episode 76. My name's Chris, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Matt and Danny. Let's get right to it. Matt, what's coming up in our flashback section? Well, Danny continues to provide excuses as to why he's not playing any games. Chris is currently reliving his childhood in the Switch remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and I've been flexing my Bloodborne skills to show Chris how it's done. And in the preview hot pants, we've got a few stories around Steam and the Epic Games Store to talk about. Now it's time for our competition. As always, at the beginning of the show, we have a little competition where we one horse tries to sell the other two a game. Danny failed miserably last week at getting any... I think he got 0 0.165 points or something. Correct. Um, and basically, we give one point if you would buy the game full price and half a point if you would buy it at sale price. So basically, we wouldn't bought... I think it was Black... It's Blacklist. So, Splinter Cell Blacklist. Silless. And I get the participation medal, so fuck you all. <laughs> the so, participation. You mean a fraction? <laughs> that's what you got? Yep, that's what I got. So oh, it is you. It is Matt's turn this week. So Matt, what are you selling? Go. What are you buying? Shit, I've got to go now. Go, no. it's up. It's ready. Oh, Christ, five seconds. Right. Five seconds gone. Five, five, you're wasting time, Chris. Right, so this week I'm selling Typing of the Dead Overkill. So, we all know House of the Dead, great game, get a plastic gun, pretend that it's a real gun, fantastic. What if I told you, hear me out, instead of a gun, you could have something much more exciting, a keyboard. Oh, I. And you use this keyboard, oh, just like that one. What, what a fine <laughs> weapon. Just like that, we replace all the skill of pointing a plastic gun at a screen and hoping it's aligned with our incredible typing skills from years and years of shit posting. So basically, it's exactly the same as House of the Dead, but you don't have a gun, you have a keyboard, and here's what you do. You don't shoot, you type words, and those words are dangerous. Just like people on the internet always tell us, words are dangerous. And it goes to show in House of the Dead, Typing of the Dead, Overkill. <laughs> you play as either Agent G, which is some kind of boring, generic white guy in a suit, men in black, I don't care, or the much more exciting uh i forget his name stereotype character and uh basically you go through a series of different things like carnivals and places like that following a story i guess you could call it it's more just a load of maps and you have to type away until enemies die but here's the real kicker the dlc the dlc introduces swear words <laughs> so imagine if you will for a moment you're there, you're in a carnival, there's carnival music, there's chaos everywhere, and there's a zombie lumbers towards you. The only thing you can do to stop this zombie is type the word, piss flaps. 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave it at that, to be honest. I, if, if I haven't Five, sold you with piss flaps, four, I'm not selling you with anything three, else. So. Two, one. <laughs> right, okay. I've got a qu I've got an immediate question. We do get to ask a few questions now. Three questions each, me and Dan. First question is, what does it have? To, does it have graphics? I mean, you haven't explained what you've said. It's like like House of the Dead, which you're moving around in a house or in in like a environment, and you're shooting dead things and zombies and stuff. Is it like that? Is it a three D game or is it just? I would assume it's, a typing thing is like a typing, you know, like an adventure game, you know, like a type your own adventure type thing. So maybe I tried to sell it a little bit more on style than I did on substance. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Basically, the standard setup of House of the Dead, so it's an on-rails shooter um, where you're given kind of the, the screen, this is what's on it, you've got to get rid of the enemies to move on to the next screen. So it's exactly the same as House of the Dead. The only difference is, instead of clicking or pointing and shooting, you ha every enemy has a little box with like a word in it or sometimes like just a letter for like the thrown objects, and you have to type that word to kill the enemy. Right, okay. Okay. I, okay, so it's 3D then? It's 3D. It's exactly the same setup. If you imagine everything's exactly the same as House of the Dead, except you don't have a gun, you have a keyboard, and you just, instead of shooting or clicking or anything else, you just type the word that's in front of the enemy. Now, go on, Dan. Danny? It, does it? Because I'm going to probably go a completely different direction to what you're about to follow on from, so you might want to go again. Well, okay, it's... so my quick question is, I, I, I think... If I remember rightly, and I've played um, quite a lot of those arcade type games in arcades as well, but House of the Dead I've actually got from a PS2, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and my Wii, 
got House of the Dead overkill on my Wii. Um, are there, in House of the Dead, are there innocents that you can kill? Um, I think you can only kill them through a mission of helping them. So, like, you know, you've got the zombie walking towards them. You can't, like, see, you know, some woman who's been menaced by a zombie and type kill woman. Oh, I'm going to say, because like if, if there was that scenario in Typing of the Dead, would the, would the be a pop-up saying, don't kill this person, and or this is the word to kill this person, and you accidentally type it? I, I mean, I, does that have the same mechanic? Do you know what I mean? No, but that would be a great mod. If you had two words that were very similar, and if you did the misspelling, it killed the other person, that would be <laughs> great. Like, there, yeah, there yeah. and there. And it's like, oh, shit, which version? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> All right, Dan, Danny? I, when you're playing through and you've killed, is it animated much like House of the Dead was? It's not just like a static, like it just slides in and then you type a word and it disappears. And I'm assuming there's <laughs> actually some like cool like action sequences to it. Yeah, it's it's exactly it's all the same over the top dramatic. Okay. What what the hell is going on as House of the Dead? The only difference is, yeah, it, in, enemies just have a little word underneath them, and as they walk towards you and everything, you've got to type it, otherwise you take damage. Okay. Was it done by the same developers as House of the Dead? I believe it was. So it's it's basically them going. Okay. This is a new take on the same game. Well, originally they did it for the Dreamcast um, with Typing of the Dead. And I, I think if you've played House of the Dead Overkill, then I, I imagine it's the same story. Right, okay. So it's the same over-the-top ridiculous story, but yeah, you use a keyboard. Right. Yeah. Danny? Well, the other penalty, like, so you obviously you say you've got a health bar and you lose health for typing it incorrectly, like... Does it, oh, no, each time you type it incorrect, like I get, I assume it, you have retries. Like it's it's not. Um, so how it works is say you've say you've been given the word, you know, ass face or something like that, which is a word in the extended dictionary, and you can add your own dictionaries if you really feel like that doing well it. known I'll, single word ass face. That's, it is <laughs> no hyphenation or anything. It's disgusting, really. Ass face. <laughs> exactly. In the north, it is one word. Um, so say you type ass fast, then all it does is just stops and waits for you to go back and type the rest of the word, which is actually really off-putting and it does kind of make you panic a little bit. So it doesn't yeah. take health off you when you do that? At that point, yeah. No, the, the enemies still come towards you and attack you. Okay. At the same ah. as House of the Dead. So it's not like you're punished for typing it wrong. It's like you've missed with the shot. with Exactly. The bullet, right. Got you. Cool. Reloading. Okay. How do you reload? No reloading? You type in reload. No, no, there's no <laughs> reloading. You just keep typing. So it's not exactly the same then? It's not exactly the same, no. Hideous. But my other favourite word to type is pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> you said it about 500 times, you see. You've answered it's every single question with, it's exactly the same as, apart from, we type shit in. <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's actually an underwater berry-picking survival game. <laughs> Fuck Two points from Chris. Berries Pernatic, damn it, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you got your last question? Um, no, I think every, that's, I, I know what I know what it is now. I've got it. I don't, so, I'm not sure if I've asked all mine. To be fair, I've, I've lost count. <laughs> it's ridiculous. If, totally if, ridiculous. If you've got another quick one, I'm, I'm open to, to answer your questions. So, yeah, oh. <clears throat> yeah. So, <clears throat> is, it, is it exactly the same as the other... <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent apart from you can't die you ha can't, can't when die. you type things in people just stand still and look at you and go mate that was shit. <laughs> no, <they're... laughs> mate you type that wrong typo soz exactly my the, the, you, you're literally fighting like grammatical zombies and if you like <laughs> if you miss out a word you know if you get a word and you'd forget you know i before e except after c you are fucked right oh so it's that bad is it right it's, it's grave if they had this in schools Kids would be affluent. No, not affluent. Fluent. <laughs> if they were taking See, jobs as if, typists, if, maybe. If, if they had secretary. this in schools, then maybe I'd have got the right word. Everyone, every kid should be a secretary. <laughs> right. Okay. Point scoring time, Danny. You got you got Do, points. Would you? Well, actually, what's the price, Dan? I forget this every week. What's so the price? The current price is well, the the, the top end price is fourteen ninety nine on Steam. So that's the most it's ever been. 
the lowest price is £2.99 on Steam. <clears throat> Donny? Perhaps lowest price I'd buy it for. I was never a fan of the House of the Deads, purely because it used to take all my king money. <laughs> that doesn't I'm make a, a lot of salty, sense, Donny. I'm a bit salty. No, I'm, I'm not. The on-rail shooters thing, I've never really been a fan of, and I understand it's a play on the original, but... I don't know. I think I'd, for, for three quid, is it two ninety nine for three quid? I'd probably stick it in the Steam library, but I don't think I'd pay fifteen for it. I okay. uh, last time I played a House of the Dead, which was the one on the Wii, um, it gave me a migraine, and I haven't played one since. Um, but I would get that at low at low, the lower price. Definitely wouldn't pay fifteen ninety nine for it though. No, but the lower price, I'm going to give you a full half a point for that. I'm not oh. even going to be an ass about it. Full half a point. So is that half it's, a point from each of us? I think yeah. Is it That's half points? Full for... point. I'd, I'd full give you, point. I'd give you a little bit more, but I'm not gonna because I, because of how you sold it. It was a good one that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, it was the piss flaps that sold it, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was the arse face. Was it? <laughs> okay, okay. Right. So, moving on to our flashback section, section where we talk about games we've played. Danny, it's always me first because you've not? never played anything. We can get you over and done with stuff. easy. Yeah. All right. What if I take an hour? I've actually played quite a lot of uh, Dawn of War recently. Not... So you know, you know, this has to be interesting content yeah. for the podcast. Have you ever played Dawn of War? Time. I have. Yeah. Did you enjoy Dawn of War? I did very much so. Yeah. Um, you I... the Apocalypse mod. I don't think so. I think I played the DLC for Dawn of War, all of the DLC, but it's but, a yeah. long time since I played it. Yeah, we went well. Me and Thorne went back to it. We've been going back to RTSs recently for some reason. I think we're, that's all we're going to do at LAN. We picked up Dawn of War because it's easier than a lot of... I say easier, but also a bit slower. You get a bit of breathing room to kind of pick your battles and decide what you're doing, where you're going. Because we then played Command & Conquer, which is way, way, way different to Dawn of War. And I see that now. But yeah, we went back to Dawn of War. So we've got all the DLC. I've played, obviously... Winter Assault, Soulstorm, and all that Dark Crusade, and all that stuff. So we played that for a little bit, and then we went on to what's called the Apocalypse mod, which really opens. So Dawn of War was always sort of criticised a little bit for being like, oh, it is quite a simplistic take on Warhammer because Warhammer is crazy, like deep, especially mm. with the lore and stuff, um, and the units that you could do, and like it was very very limiting even though it was still fun the apocalypse mod just completely changes the game entirely it's like rather than it being just a dawn of war rts it takes it to feel more like an actual tabletop game of warhammer if you kind of understand that so you can zoom way out which you couldn't do in the original game and that gives it that air of being able to keep track of multiple things it's almost like an actual warhammer battles happening live as well as the zoom out feature which is probably the best part of it there's also the fact that every army that they well they've amended all the armies but they've added some as well so you start at a, in soulstorm it took you up to having the dark eldar um and the necrons i believe they've added in the inquisition they've added in chaos demons and i think there's another one they've added but i can't recall the list quite 100 percent as entire what they've added in oh tyranids Sorry, Tyranids. They've added entire sides from scratch. There was no prior animation for it or anything. They've done it all, these modders, and brought in these armies. And it gives it a whole... It, those new armies are a whole lot deeper than the original armies would have been. And they've also expanded upon all the previous armies as well. So whereas Space Marines, you might cap out at like a tank or something that was really good. You've now got the ability to like make titans if it gets to that stage of the game. So you get r absolutely shit tons more units, more specific units like there are in the actual Warhammer tabletop, but also way, way, way bigger tech trees. And that leaves, well, we've still not explored it all basically, but it just opens it up so much more and we've like completely changes the game. So it's com it's almost brand new to me. Is, I'm going to say, is this a new mod though? Is it, or has it been out for no, a long time? No, it's been time? going around. For, I think it's been going around since around 2015, but it's right. still developed to wow. this day. So, and this is Dawn of War 1 or 2? This is Dawn of War 1. Right. So the base building hunkering down if you kind of want to game. Dawn of War 2, I, although I've picked it up, I've completely different game to, to 1. Right. I'm not sure I've played 2. I'm... 2 is more the tactical, the tactical real-time strategy. Is it's, 
portrayed. It's more of a you get a set amount of squads and you have to like synergize with those squads. And you've got like a group of space marines, a group of like jetpack guys, can't remember what they're called. You get a champion or whatever he's called, and you get like a heavy bolt squad. That's Dawn of War 2 in a nutshell. That's all you get. And you just move around with those where there is Dawn of War 1 was obviously just build whatever you can and sort of chuck it at a wall and see what sticks. So I bought Dawn of War. I've got it on CD behind me. That's yeah. the uh, original one I bought and I'll, I'll have played some DLC as well. But I've actually, yeah. I got it in a pack as well. So I've got Dawn of War 2, but I don't think I've ever played it. Dawn of War, it's, it's okay. Is it worth a go? It's worth... I'd say oh, hang yeah. on. I've got Dawn of War 2 Retribution. I played 22 minutes of it. But I haven't played anything of the base game. Retribution. The Retribution is definitely a DLC for, for yeah. Dawn of War 2. Yeah. Because the Retribution, I think there's Chaos Rising as well. Um and I actually have recently picked up Dawn of War 2. It was literally on the night after I played Dawn of War 1. I was like, oh, I wonder what this compares like now. Um still stands up. It's all right. It is <laughs> if you kind of love Dawn of War 1, it's sort of like a a bit of a kick in the teeth. Right. You're like expect a sequel, more armies and and stuff like that, and then it's not. And you're Have like, you played oh. um, played any of the dungeon sieges? No. So dungeon siege two was like the the ultimate one. One was okay, but two for me anyway. I know everyone will have a different opinion, but dungeon siege yeah. two is a dungeon crawler, you know, like a, a Diablo type thing. Um, but two was particularly good, quite detailed, quite deep, and then three was this. It, it felt like it was an on rails, really limited, uh, f you know, targeted at consoles with a limited kind of mm. move set, you know, control set. And it just, yeah. it, there was a fixed screen on it. You couldn't zoom in and out properly. And the camera angles are all, it just went, it went like Fisher Price, you know, and <laughs> it was, it was rubbish in comparison. Yeah. I, again, I played very little of it because I, I just couldn't, couldn't be bothered. Yeah. But yeah, I assessed, yeah. I, think, I might give it a go still at some point. Yeah, it's it's just that when you Dawn of War One was obviously the first, like, as far as I'm aware, the first real time strategy game that Games Workshop licensed for the Warhammer Forty Thousand so. franchise. I, I remember it coming out because I was quite into Warhammer at the time. Yeah, as was I. Yeah, and then when you set a bar like that, and then completely change the like yeah just completely changed the type of game it is in the second one i think left people's left their blood running cold yeah like but then three was supposed to bring it back and i think they tried but everybody says bad things about three but people still have as a game on its own dawn of war 2 don't try and link it to the first one it stands mm -hmm. on its own it's good it's very very different in how it feels and plays but we've been playing yeah dawn of war apocalypse mod and it is absolutely insane how much time has gone into that mod is it good it, it's brilliant. Like yeah. it's absolutely brilliant. It's hard to. Dis it's almost like it's not rose tinted glasses because it's not. It's like I picked up Warhammer, I dropped it, and now it's just like it's kind of making me fall in love with that whole entire universe again because it's 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 what it needed from the get go. But the amount of time the devs would have had to put into the original Dawn of War one game to get this to how the mod is now mm. would have been just far too much. They would have probably never released it. Oh, they couldn't possibly so, have put extra effort in as, as oh, a no, real no. developer. Could It'd they? be still being developed, mate, and it would have been just been getting Dawn of War 1 in 2019, roughly cr ready for Christmas. Um, yeah, but how good would it have been? Oh, it would have been absolutely amazing. So yeah, it, it definitely opens it up and it refreshes the game to the point where it is like, yeah, this feels like, doesn't feel like Dawn of War anymore, but it is Dawn of War because it's all Warhammer. And, and that's what can you, recaptured me again. Can you install the mod uh, via Steam, or can you install it in the Steam directory if you've got it on Steam? The mod is a bit of a pain in the ass to install, but Thorno's kind of everything we've been modding, he's been keeping a collection of. So, or no, that's not useful for anybody outside of the podcast, but although you can message in if you want it, we can sort you out. But oh, yeah, no, 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 we you can't guys, say that. We can't say that. Not? It's, a, it's licensed and, and all. No, no, and... no, 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 no. Like, point them to the links where you get the most oh, right, from. Right. I'll let you off. Yeah, Resonance not like, Arcade not give not you a support free modifying game. your games. Whereas, no. we're not doing point them to links where you can get the correct things. What I'm saying Wha is, wow, <laughs> wait, <laughs> bit of a pain in the ass to get the mods files and done in the right order. But once it's done, definitely, definitely worth it. And it still works, obviously, multiplayer, which is the biggest part. So that's pretty, pretty dope. So cool. yeah. I might give it a go to be fair. I've, uh, really I've been enjoying Haven't it. played a good RTS for a while and Dawn of War's on my list of to play at some point. 
Have yeah. you been playing um, co-op or com like, We've against each other? We've been doing comp stomps, uh, co-op comp stomps. Um, the AI is improved as well. That's bullshit. Like, ridiculously hard to beat the AI on anything apart from easy. Like, they are poor. No. It, do you know where we, when we've talked in the past on the podcast about RTS guys and how they might have like keyboard shortcuts and all that shit. It's literally like playing against someone like that. It's just like you're just about to spin up your first power generator and they've already got fucking 10 million orcs and a tank rolling your way and you're like, what? Yeah. How am I supposed to compete? How did, how did you get that librarian? You <laughs> <laughs> Titan already. <laughs> Orbital strikes. What the fuck is this? No, yeah, it's really hard. But it's just... <laughs> so we have been playing on easy mode because yeah, right. So moving on then, um, it does sound it does it sounds good, and I, I think I'll have a go. Um, yeah, go to the land might even might even actually get to see you playing games, and maybe oh, imagine that. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm um, just, you. before we move on, Matt, you made a note in the document about typing of the dev, and you put in an abacabra gabba rhyme scheme. What what does that mean? That's the rhyme scheme that I was going off of. So you know, it starts with the A phrasing, then moves to B, then uh, continues with B phrasing back to A, then to C. You might have to go back and watch it to pick up on the subtle rhyme scheme that I used. Right. Okay. Fair enough. That's why you were speaking at like half speed when you were doing it. Exactly. Trying I'd, to, you know, process it. Look, I'm bringing a Shakespearean <laughs> thespian vibe. To the podcast. A very subtle that? one. A very subtle one. I was gonna say it's yeah. so subtle people won't find it for years. <laughs> We're looking back, finding the Easter eggs on our episode seventy six for <laughs> eons. Well have our own subreddit. Do you do you remember episode seventy six when Matt did this rhyming scheme? If you go back and look now, you'll be amazed. He's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> what episode are they on now? Seventy eight. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Matt, what have you been on with this week? So I've played a couple <laughs> of things this week, one of which I picked specifically because you were playing it and I just kind of wanted to get back into the space of it and because we talked about it a bit last week and mm. another one because it's been sat there for a while and I wanted to kind of give it another chance. So I'll start with that one, um, Red Dead Redemption 2. And it's the game... Yeah, it's, it's the <laughs> game that I really, really want to like, but it won't let me. It is it, fucking brilliant, but fucking awful. I wish it would get out of its own way. That it, <laughs> it, Honestly, the, the biggest issue is they've done so much. It's like, look at this, you know, gorgeous animation of a man, you know, bending over to rifle through another man's pockets. Now watch it 15 more times while you get four bullets out of every single person's pocket that you've just shot. It's... It's a technical achievement, but it's not a gameplay achievement. It's, it's not a game. It's that the the problem I had with it is that it, it's it's a, yes absolutely wonderful to play, but it's not fun to play, and that's mm -hmm. where my enjoyment stops. So obviously my enjoyment stops when there's no fun. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, it's a film, you know. We're playing a film, and it, and even the story wasn't that good. Really, it was a little bit. It was too drawn out for me. I'm going to let you finish because you're the one who's talking about it, but I, I'm quite passionate about this one. It, it, is that okay? Can I can I speak on my segment? Not your segment. This is a dis this is a podcast. We discuss things with each other, or you listen to my opinion and you agree with me. Well, be well, well, if you well. don't. Well, be I think, we, I think we've just discovered something about this group podcast <laughs> that's Chris's. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, you're right. It's the biggest issue is it. It wants to show you every little detail all the time, and I, I just want it to be more arcade. I want it to be a bit more pick up, play for half an hour and have fun. Not pick up, spend half an hour trying to find where my horse has run off to, so I can swap out a gun to another gun and then have to trudge back through a forest to shoot. I, I just, I can't. I can't get into the game because, like I said, it won't get out of its own way. It's like it's constantly... It's like trying to go into a shop and trying to buy something and you want to buy it, but the salesman's constantly trying to talk you into buying something else or show you something else. It's like, no, I know what I want to do. Just let me do it. Ah, but what about this? We've got all these horses in the back. Do you want to go... You know, do you want some new horses? No, I've got a horse. I'm fine. In Korea, these new horses. Ones? <laughs> Maybe in Blackpool. I don't know, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. It's exactly that. It's... I just, it's, I, th I, th I think the immersion part of it 
is wonderful. The fact you are in a cowboy simulator, the fact that you're you're completely 100% immersed in this world, and if you want to be a cowboy and you don't want to get your chaps on and and you know run out and do some yeah. live action stuff, it's a great it's a great getaway. But you have to take it exactly like that. You can't take it as a game that I can jump into and enjoy. It was, um, it's a note you've made, but I've, I've just used the word to describe it before, an absolute slog to get through it. I, I went back to it every night for ages and ages, and I just, I didn't feel like I was making any progress, and I just wanted it to be over. By the end, time the end, so have you completed it? No, I'm in um, Guam, Guam, or... Um, Can't the remember. Little- yeah, some little um, fancy island that's basically the same. All right, so that you're about two thirds of the way through, but it's still there's still so much to do, and the, the the variation of the missions, it's essentially the same mission over and over and over with a few set pieces that are quite impressive and quite cool. Um, it just, I'm I'm disappointed with it. That's yeah. the best way to describe it. I, I think as a piece of media, it's great. As a game, it's uh, it's okay. It's, it's like, okay for a while. It's like trying to play a, a flight simulator if you don't like flight simulators. You know, it's that. It's the same thing. You're playing this cowboy simulator, and they're kind of forcing you to it be a to be a cowboy, and and it not. I know there's not entire realism in it, but it's as close to it as you're probably going to get. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like it's like what I wanted was like what they gave me was the film True Grit, and what I really wanted was Blazing Saddles. Mm. I wanted something that was just fun and stupid, and you know, like Rockstar games used to be, like the GTA games. They they were always tongue in cheek about things, and I wouldn't have minded if this was just a little bit more tongue in cheek, a bit more of the time. Just you know, at least if there was comedy, that'd keep me going. But everything's just so depressing, and oh, oh, my boots are muddy, and oh, my horse has got a cold. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Have you? I mean, this may be a bit personal for a, a public broadcast uh, podcast, Matt. But have you ever suffered from like depression or, or feeling down, or you know, are you susceptible to that kind of thing? Right now, right. So, <laughs> well, because you're playing Red Dead. <laughs> Fucking but game. what I'm saying is, don't complete the game because it is so bloody depressing. The whole thing is just a, it's just a depressing experience. Well, there my is... horse died. Time to hang my old noose from the tree. <laughs> far off. <laughs> well, Danny, have you played it? I haven't. I've not done it. Done. <laughs> there I are better one. games to spend your time on, you know. I'd yeah. say better games. It's still wonderful to experience, and they've done an amazing job at that. But it's not for every. It's not as mass marketed as all the other games are. Like Grand Theft Auto is fun all round. It's got some comedy in there. It's got some great gameplay. There are some repetitive missions and stuff in the single player games. But you know they're always trying to push the boat out a little bit. But is have, have, did you play the first one, Matt? Um, Red Dead Redemption, not first Red, Red Dead, Dead Redemption. Yeah, yeah, loved it. That I, I was, I bought a PlayStation Four for Red Dead Redemption too, and well, that and Bloodborne, which we'll get onto in a minute. Yeah, and at the first one, there was something different about it. I, the I protagonist it just, was more interesting, and I think it knew what it was a bit more. Whereas this, it, it's like I say, it, it wants to show you everything that every single person has worked so hard to do, and I appreciate the amount of work that's gone into this. But you know, take a step back and just make the game fun. And then add the polish. Don't make the polish the entire game. I've had more fun playing a two ninety nine indie game off, you know, a random Steam purchase, you know, and that says a lot considering how much the game costs to develop and you know, the amount of effort that went into. Yeah, it's... it is disappointing, isn't it? But so next game we'll talk about. We've already mentioned it. Something that I'm still playing. You started playing again, Matt. I I picked back up just. Because um, I've got a save that's round about where you are. I've been playing a bit of Bloodborne again. And yeah, I hate dying in it. You're absolutely right. It's awful. But I keep doing it. <laughs> I was just reading a blog on it today. Um, someone wrote, uh, I think because of me and the wife in, on this IP address in my house, in my house are doing loads of searches for Bloodborne-based stuff. I'm more interested guides. in the law. No, not guides, actually. No, it's uh, the, the law about... <laughs> 
what the hell are they going on about? I don't even know what the disease is. I don't know what the hunt is. I don't know what a hunter is. I don't know why I'm doing any of this. It's You're just a hunter. <laughs> I get that much, but why am I hunting? What's the po but the, the, this the, the lore is so spread out in the game, and it drip feeds you, and it still, by the sounds of it, doesn't actually get to a conclusion. Um, it by the end of the game, apparently, the um, community have kind of made up and filled in the blanks, and there's quite a lot of stuff to read out there on it. So I've been doing that. I read a guy's blog who said exactly what I said last week, pretty much, but, but he said it much more eloquently that it's a it's a game that keeps drawing me back in. It's and and I suppose it's very difficult. I keep dying. I'm not making that much progress. I've managed to kill Father Gascoigne, which I think I told you guys about this week. Um, moved on to the next area. Pretty much nailed the next area. Didn't get killed by anybody because I kind of got the flow of the general combat with the standard enemies. Um, died once or twice, but you know nothing major. And I'm now on to Vicar Amelia, um, yep. who's an optional boss. I think I don't think you have to kill her. But I want the the lamp that she'll she'll no doubt let me have, so I can move to other areas quicker. Because there's some really nasty hunters down this one side. And anyway, um, and I can't do a. I got her down to about get a slither of health, a slither with the help of uh, another hunter, and then died and did just threw my roll pad at a wall. <laughs> did you get Did you get greedy with the last bit of health and think I'm gonna go for it? Yeah, and she took me down from full health all the way down to nothing within within two hits or something, and it was. Oh. It, like I said, the game is an exercise in patience, but I, I mean, with with the lore and stuff like that, you you're right. It is completely. I don't know. You might as well just throw a dictionary at the wall and see what words stick to it, and try and string that together into a story. Sometimes with anything from FromSoft, it's nothing in the game holds your hand, even the story. Everything requires effort, and I think that's why people like it so much. Because you get you get drip fed stuff, and you get told everything, and you know all the exposition is done all the time in games. So to have something that says no, well, why don't you go find it yourself? You know, the story is in the world around you. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, it's it's kind of like a, a Coen Brothers film. You know, where it's not like here is a definite start and here's a conclusion. It's like what what we're seeing is kind of one character in the most interesting part of their life and it's not like at the end there's a, fi a finale or a conclusion you get to the end of the story and there's more presumably more after that but you're just seeing the most interesting part of that character's life yeah yeah uh, again you're you're kind of an external you're not even part of yarnum you're a, a foreigner in the land and there's other foreigners as well there's things like that pop up. There was a, a woman that I, another hunter or a hunter of hunters that I ran into, kind of in. I think it was in Yarnum, the the first area, and I found her up some stairs somewhere, and I, I can't find her again. I can't. I, I, I did find her a second time, but then I can't find her again. But apparently, because I've killed Fatha Gascoigne, Fatha, Father Gascoigne, <laughs> Fatha Gascoigne. Uh, um, there's when I went back to the. Odeon Chapel light uh, lamp. I, I, started, I was just running around looking to see if I'd missed anything, you know, and I just suddenly got attacked by a hunter. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? So I, I scarper because I'm like, I, I took, I hit him once and it took two elf off him. And I'm like, oh, run away. <laughs> so I fucked off. And I, re I was reading up, I read up about that particular thing. I was like, well, why has this hunter just appeared? It's a, something to do with that girl, that woman that I met. She's hunting hunters that have gone crazy. And this guy is there's somewhere, there's some sentence somewhere some or, or something written somewhere in the game that explains that this guy is Father Gascoigne's old partner and she is oh, hunting. Yeah. She was hunting Father Gascoigne and now she's hunting him. And if you keep fighting him, she will appear and start attacking him. Um, and wow. if you... There's all kinds of, like, story branches. If you attack her too much, she'll kill him. But then she'll become hostile later on in the story to you. But not now. Uh, it's like, oh, everything you do has an effect on everything. It just keeps drawing. All these little things are like, I really want to play it, but it's so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> I cry. But well done from software. That's how you make a fun, compelling game. It's exactly. Rock hard. Nailed it. Harder than, harder than Chucky Egg on the Commodore 64. And that was <laughs> bloody nails. Chucky Egg. 
Yes. So what else? What have you been playing this week, Chris? I'll, I'll introduce you for a change. Oh, thank you. Right, so I um, new games I've been playing. Obviously, I've been playing Bloodborne and still playing Dying Light. The following, I'm nearly at the end of the main story on that. I've got a few, um, got buggy upgraded quite far. I've, you know, really, still quite enjoying that. It's such a good experience, such a good fun game to play. Um, but I'm playing uh, Zelda: Link's Awakening. It came out last Friday. It's the first game for a very, very long time that I got on release day. Or I went to get, and the sh- local shop didn't have it in, and it was the day after that they, they got the delivery, and he was well gutted because he lost loads of sales. Um, so, have you played the original, any of you? On the Game Boy? On the Game Boy, yeah. I have. I played it quite a lot. So, do you remember the story? <laughs> the basic premise? Uh, there's a windy fish that <laughs> likes music, something like that. Yeah, so you have to, instead of going around collecting... Um, Triforce pieces or pendants or, you know, the standard kind of... Instead of rescuing Princess Zelda, Zelda's nowhere to be seen. Um, you land on this island and you're, you have to awaken the um, the wind fish by collecting seven instruments from different dungeons. Similar premise, but slightly different. Um, and it's got, a, it's got a mix of... There's Kirby in there. There's a mix of Super Mario in there as well. So all of the different like Nintendo franchises are all in this game, and I forgot about that. I think when I was a kid, I didn't really know about those Nintendo franchises. Po- Pokemon as well is in there a little bit. Um, Pikmin too. That's in. That's in there. Um, so all of these franchises, I never knew anything about them. I was really I was a Nintendo kid, but I never played those games. Um, so it's really interesting playing it now. I know quite a lot about them and seeing them everything in color. The graphics have been completely overhauled. It's a very very similar game. But they've improved a lot of little things. They've also added a dungeon builder in there as well. Oh. So if you um, if you go to a certain part on the overworld, there's a little hut, uh, and there's a guy called Dempy, Dempy, who was in the com- uh, he was in the N64 uh, Ocarina of Time version. He dug graves for you. Gravekeeper, yeah. He's the same. I think he's the same character. Um, <clears throat> but he basically, you speak to him, and you can now build dungeons by clicking things together. So you any area that you've seen any dungeon at room you can click it with another one and you can make a dungeon it, it turns out to be a bit weird um because you've got like loads of different themes going on within your custom dungeon but you can save them to amiibos as well and take them around your friends house if you want to but that's the only way you can save them you can't save them online or share them <laughs> it's a episode of nostalgia for me basically it was 40 I think I got it forty two ninety nine. The most I prayed for any game for a long, long, long time, and I'm not sad about buying it for that much. But I've nearly finished it, and I could have easily finished it if I'd played it more than I have done um, within a day or two. Probably there's not that much there, but there wasn't that much in the original game either. But I spent tons of time playing the original game. Because I didn't know how to do it back then, and I didn't, I hadn't played so many Zelda games and this game before. Experience. I I recommend it if you like Zelda games and you like, uh, you know, Nintendo games. I would go back to it. I I do remember. I don't remember things like Pikmin in it. That must be like a new addition with the Switch. Um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure of Pikmin because I don't know that world that much, but I, I think I read somewhere that there's Pikmin in it. But Kirby's definitely in there, um, and there's def- there's like Goombas and there's was there a, a side scrolling element? To... There was a there was a couple of little sections that were side scrolling, yeah, but it, it was typically typically like I think you'd find little trap doors in dungeons, and if you went down them, then it went side on. Yeah, it's the same in this. I don't know if they're the same or there's more of them or there's less of them, but it's again it's. Basically, you around jumping on Goombas and go from one area to another. It's just another way to traverse a dungeon. Um, but yeah, I, it's it feels very very familiar, very nostalgic, and it's great. There's I love Nintendo games. There's no mess, you know. There's no fuss. It's just pure fun, and you know kind of what you're going to get. And there's very few bugs in them as well. They've got such a very good QA system. Yeah. Go for it. I'd recommend it on the Switch. Get it. Yeah, cool. Other than that, I've been playing uh, a quick uh, game, yes, last night called West of Loathing, indie game. 
and it's a you can look at it as a, a kind of a it's a stick figure point and click adventure game um <clears throat> the it's got some very good humor in it so you're this little guy you name him biff tanner or whatever you want to call him <clears throat> and um you you just go into different rooms and you go into bars and stuff and the humor in it's very self-deprecating and very um <clears throat> bit random in places but it's it's good and it's made me and all my mates laugh around out uh, around my mates uh on tuesday night last night and we were uh we we're quite enjoying it i'd again recommend it have a look it's just black and white um and it's you can do the you can do the game in different ways so if you don't um make certain choices and make do certain options in the right order you basically won't end up with some characters in your party got turn-based combat in it as well, very like Final Fantasy VII, Japanese kind of turn-based style. Um, you fight for some reason. Meat is the currency <laughs> in the game. So you, you get meat and you use meat to buy things. Um, and cool. cows are the millions. enemy. Yeah, cows are the <laughs> enemy. So there's like hell cows all over the place. <clears throat> and I'm a snake oil merchant. I've chosen that as my class. Um, and I've got a briefcase full of snakes. And I just basically, sometimes I can deploy a snake on the ground and it'll act as a another party member. Are we talking like MS Paint levels of... Art? Absolutely shit, but brilliant at the same time. Right, okay. It's it's really, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of effort's gone into it as a game as well. Um, yeah. I did try it when I got it in like the Steam sale this year, very briefly. And I thought, oh, I need to, I can see how deep this might get. I need to spend a bit of time on it. But last night, I think we played it for about three or four hours. And uh, yeah, we were all laughing. Every, every the the interactions and chats you have with people and stuff is, is good. And the score's quite good as well. Uh, score's done by a guy I know, which is uh, another reason I got it because he was touting it and kind of pimping it. But it's um, yeah, it's good. Okay. Mm. Right. So should we move on then? Unless there's any other games that you've played that you want to talk about, Danny? Have you played any games? Any other games? Ha ha ha. <laughs> no, you were saying that you were playing one. I think it was called War of Dawn. Uh, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> War, War of Dawn. War of Dawn. You playing Cheap it in Chinese reverse? Knock off. Yeah, I just. <laughs> <laughs> so who is Dawn? I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <fun. hot> spot. <laughs> War of Dawn. She's she's having a shit time. <laughs> nah, the only, two, the only two games I played recently are Donovan One and Two, both of which I've discussed. Shadow of Mordor, I've kind of dropped. It's pissed me off. Mm. Yeah. Have you found the microtransactions then? No. <laughs> no, he died. Quickly once. to jump onto it, what really fucking annoyed me in that game is like, it's like, okay, cool, go find these generals, and then you're like, okay, cool, right, I can take the time, I can like plan this and go through it. I don't know if my game's fucked or what, but I was in a battle with a general killed the general and then there was another general who like instantly and in, you know like when you get insta locked into another like cutscene mm. i just turned around insta locked into that guy's cutscene and i was just like what the fuck is this are they trying to find me or that what's sometimes happen yes they do that sometimes just, happens as part of the game i thought kind of. it was my role to go out and find them and no like, no they they that's the that's the nemesis system they come and find you as well right but you can Make avoid them sense. If you see a Lord of Orcs and you happen to see one that looks a bit different, usually he's a general or a sergeant or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, you just run away. But you can run away from them. Don't worry, Danny. You, you don't have to fight them. No, I don't back down. I've fucking ruined his night. So you got annoyed because of the game. You didn't. You, you thought the game was too intelligent. No, I like no, not. I thought it was bugged. Is like I just couldn't understand how I'd had three interactions with like basically. I like, just fucking threw everything at me at once, and I was just like, surely not. Oh, it's too surely stressful. I, surely I can this just have a bit has of a too much game. <laughs> surely I, I thought... can like take my time to hide in a bush and fire some arrows off at some fucking unsuspecting orcs. Nope. All right, mate. I'm here to stab you up. What's up, mate? And it's just like, oh, not a fucking gun. Here we go. And. I put it down for a time being. I'm just going to leave it there for a bit. I'll never go back to it. I will. I will. No, I know promise that. that I will. That, don't... Now I know it's a Dark Souls wannabe. We can. It's we can go. nothing like Dark Souls. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you! <laughs> wow. How very dare you! <laughs> well, seem to have offended the uh, 
It's no, it's just it's the high so far there. removed from from that <laughs> game. It's 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 a, it's a good fun, and it's I I like the mechanic in in the original one. Again, I don't know. It might be bugged your your, but that's what happens. It's, Sometimes you've got three or four generals that all are in one place, and you have to fight them all. Well, you don't have to. You can fight one of them and then piss off. And another thing that got me is I killed a guy, and then it was just like, ah, no, mate, he escaped death, and he's come to find you now. I'm like. What? Why you didn't kill you him just right? Randomly escape that? What do you mean? I didn't kill him right. You had to kill him, and you had to right kill him. Right? What? Like you had to oh, probably kill him? Oh, uh, you shoved the, you shoved the knife through his left testicle. It should have been the right. Like no, no. Do you just have to really kill him? What? Just keep going at him after he's he's just a corpse. No, I think I think they do actually genuinely come back. That, that's fucking annoying because I'm like I've progressed. No, you haven't. I was like, oh yeah, but you <laughs> have. No, you haven't. And you're like, what? are You just make up your in mind game <laughs> whenever you see something like that danny a wizard did it <laughs> <laughs> my friend merlin one of my friends lost him. he was a got him got him because <laughs> we didn't get everything in this um uh what did I, what's that? the west of loathing game west i was just Britain. describing because we didn't get everything in the starting area i missed one person out or i didn't do something in the right order he was stressing out he was like proper going Oh, I can't. Oh, I don't think I'd like this. I'd have to. Oh, you, we'll have to play it again from the start. We'll have to do it all properly and exactly right. And I'm like, no, just enjoy the game. Just like, oh, fuck it. I've made a mistake. I'll, I'll, we have to play it several times so we see everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Several times, mate. But that's so we got about two plays in not, it. Not <laughs> once, not twice, several. several. Yes. <laughs> There's no branching endings. It's the same ending every time. Ah, but what if we miss something? And watch on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, pl I played Shadow Mordor a lot, and that happened. I might have to get Shadow Warders to have a play just to kind of prove you wrong to make sure it could that be, I don't know. It could just, it just seemed a little bit like over the top, like really over the top. So I quit the game, like to <laughs> rage quit. No, no, like normally it's like end of night, I came off it, and then the next day I went on it, and it was just like, I'm back right. I wasn't, I was in Gondor, and then it was just like, no, you're not, you're back at the start. I'm like, what? What's fuck it? Why? Like, I was going to work my way back down. But anyway, it took me back at the start, and then there was, like, three fucking generals there and I had to kill, and then, the, like, I got a bit further up into, like, this level, like, the first tier of Gondor. And then I was on a roof, slashed a guy up, and then, whilst shouting Yorkshire, by the way, and then um, <laughs> to, to instantly no turned around and just instantly, just sent far too, just, like, I don't know, just far too much all at once, like... I mean, you can't. Some of these games, you can't just go and fight the end boss, you know, no, no, without no, no. I having leveled your character. Take, up, but... I kind of wanted it to be a bit like Assassin's Creed, in a sense, where I can just the like, same game walk fifteen around. times. No, like where I can just walk around and be like, okay, right, he's he's in a bit of a shitty position there. Like, I'll wait. No, he, mate, he's I, got his binoculars I, out looking for me. I, I think like, I get what. what... I think I get what you mean more now. When you said you wanted it to be more like Assassin's Creed, that kind of makes a bit more sense, other than just there's too many enemies, I don't like it. Yeah, it's not like... I don't mind, because the combat system, like in, like you said, it's like Batman, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, you can you can just bounce off enemies all, all day long. But it kind of like... It just gets a bit boring after a while, after you've just got a crowd of orcs that you give. You want to try some different stuff, and like try... like picking them off with arrows from a distance or whatever it is, there just like change it up a bit. There are different types of missions as well, though. I mean, I don't know if you've unlocked them all, because you don't just get them in Shadow, Shadow Mordor from the off. You know, you have to open them all up and... Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got to go, like, interrogate people and bits and bobs to find out different, yeah. you know, generals and whatever else. And I was doing that, and then it was just like, okay, I found him, target him, and then I just completely come across a general I hadn't found yet, that I hadn't ID'd, and it was just like, who the fuck are you? Like, what's going on? Oh, go on, McUg face. <laughs> what are you looking oh, at? Oh. <laughs> and it was just, yeah. I'll, I'll pick General it up again. I don't know. I, can't, I really can't be able to start in a new game if it is bugged. I don't know. Someone it's else not. wants to play it and just see. I don't know. I've never the, played one, so I didn't know what to expect. The thing is, if if I played it, I wouldn't get the same experience as you. I might go into oh, an yeah. area, and there might be one general, or there might be none. You know, I think, I think they're in certain areas, but... Then they'll start moving around once you've experienced, once you've found them. If you've got, if you've really pissed someone up or, or off, or you've run away from them a number of times, they'll start chasing you down and they'll start coming to get you. Or if you, I can't remember if you run away, maybe they won't come and get you. 
but if you've killed them or you've tried to kill them or they've killed you a number of times, then that affects yeah. how much they want to do you in. Yeah. Which is so that was what was very good. That's what kind of it's good. It's good in like yeah, in on paper. Like what threw me though is I'd hardly done anything. I just basically got to the point where I was like interrogating worms, as they're called, like using the mind thing. Like, and I'd not done anything to anybody. Trick. I might have stepped on a blade of grass wrong, and he was just like, "Oi!" But like, I'd not attacked anybody, and it's just like three guys come looking for me all at once. And I was, you like, know, the um, you know, Lord of the Rings, yeah. You know, you know when. You go into Mordor, you shouldn't really yeah. be there. And oh yeah, you know, no, I get shit that. Shit happens in Mordor, yeah. I get that, but it's just like it just sent unnatural. As to how many generals were in one area at one time, and it was just but what orcs in Leeds would be fine. Yeah, yeah, that'd be natural, yeah. would it? There yeah. are a, there are a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it's not an issue, but. <laughs> But I'll try it later. I'll try it again later. Something I don't know. When I've got over my RTS hypo, I'll try again. I'll uh, I'll see how much it is, and I might grab it and have a, have a quick blast on it. Um, right. So let's move on. Preview hot pants. This is where we choose a topic to talk about. We've got a few topics this week, um, mainly about game stores. Mm. One about Steam. One about Epic Games. But the Epic Game Store, that that one that everybody loves. I'm afraid I've gone to the dark side and I've installed it. Oh my! Have you been playing Fortnite, Chris? <laughs> I've taken a step back from this entire Epic Game Store thing. I just see like people shouting about it in this corner and people being like, "Don't be such a sheep" or whatever in the other. I have no idea why people argue about this. Like, what? Can someone explain to me what they did wrong? They spent money to buy exclusivity on games, and, and that's people, people don't annoyed. people right. don't like that. They but at the same time, you know, they've got. I, I don't want to say that I'm. I, I don't want to say that I agree or that I disagree. I, I don't particularly think it's a great business practice in terms of like boosting your image, but at the same time, it does make sense for them to do it because. I mean, I guess consoles have been doing it for years, buying exclusivity on games, you know, funding developers to make sure that their console gets that game. Yeah. So I, I think it's basically just is it finally they, kind of hit PC. Yeah, is it, I was going to say, is it because they prodded the stick at PC and it's just like a knee-jerk, ah, oh, why are you touching our shit? Like, fuck off, go away kind of reaction I, for the most I th part. I think so. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really know why people are so mad like it, it seems to be a bit out of proportion like yes it's a shitty business practice you know it's it's anti-consumer because if you can if you've got two stores selling the same thing they might discount it more to make it more appealing yeah. to you one star they can do what they want so yeah it's shitty from that perspective but at the same time i think i think the outrage is just for outrage's sake yeah okay uh, the, the the issue that I've had with it. The, the thing that kind of drew me to it this week is I saw a few posts on Reddit about people. Sorry, let me dial it back just a little bit. Epic have been offering um, six free Batman games just, just for having the launcher. You can just attach them to your account. You get six. Yeah. I think it's the Arkham series and Lego Batman. Oh, well, so. I don't realize <laughs> that get him on nice. the download. <laughs> Judas. <laughs> Judas. <laughs> I probably got them all already, though. I've got I got like a Batman pack on Steam years ago. Like I've already got them all on console as well, but I've never played them on uh, on PC. I might, I might, might as well have them for free. Yeah. But the the thing that kind of drew me to it this week is people have been in protest of Epic have been going on the Steam store and buying the games, and like why. Does that really fix anything? Why don't you just get the games for free on Epic and spend your money on something else, and that way you win like both sides? You're supporting Steam, uh, you still get more games. I I just don't understand. Because people are dicks. That's petty, and it? it's it's not but... petty. It's they're, they're trying to prove a point. They're trying to prove a point there by saying, um, "I'm I'm still supporting Steam." Yeah. That's what they're saying. They're saying I'm still supporting Steam, Valve, the, the the our masters, etc. Right? It doesn't. What, what, you're not serving anybody by doing that, right? Epic, obviously, Epic have done as any game de big game developer in the world. They've done lots of things based on commercialism and based on um, trying to make money as a business. 
They broker these exclusive deals. They created the Epic Store not to create competition, to, cr to create money for their company. It's simple as that. People don't like that. People do not like capitalism. It's simple as that. It, 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 and I, can't, I just cannot see how it makes that much difference. If, if anything, my only problem I've got with the Epic Store at the moment is that, um, is that the launcher is shit. It's awful. But yeah. I get free games on GOG. I get free games on Humble Bundle. I get Well, that, actually, that goes into Steam most of the time. I get free games all over the shop. Kingwin, for God's sake, occasionally email with me me with free games. And, you know, they're not quite as G, bad as G2A, but they're nearly as bad as hmm. G2A, you know? But I'm a consumer. I want... If I can get free stuff, I'm going to get free stuff, you know? I don't exactly. really care where it is. I'd like everything in Steam. If worst comes to the worst, I could just add them to my Steam library, you know? Or, get this, guys, we could all just go back to desktop shortcuts. Ooh, imagine that. <laughs> Thank God I've got imagine... two monitors. Got, <laughs> got 400 games in my Steam library. <laughs> and then I could really put that bookcase that I've got sat outside to use and have a fucking library full of games. <laughs> I joke, Jewel there'll be about is. two on there. <laughs> I, I still haven't taken the plunge with um, consoles yet, um, going into the digital world with consoles. I've never bought a game. I've downloaded a few demos um, just to have a go of a game before I bought it, but I've never... I've, every single console game I've got is a physical copy. I'm aligned on that. This, I think... Pick this apart all you want. With me, with a console, it's a fight... <laughs> It isn't, it isn't. It's a finite, like, device, isn't it? It only lasts so long before you kind of, like, it just gathers dust a bit more and more and more until you never use it again. It's just like, oh, cool, there's an Xbox 360 over there. I'm not going to turn that on anymore. I kind of loathe, like, buying digital things for them to say, like, I've got two Xbox 360 hard drives in the other room. They've probably got shitloads of games on and just, like, remembering that there's, like, dead money in there. Like, I'm never going to go touch those games again. It, like, it's just like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'd just rather have a physical copy. So if I can... I can either just gloat to everyone that I've got all these cool Xbox games, or I can just fucking sell them and not have to think about them ever again. But like, I, do you I know can, what I mean? I put them on my shelf downstairs, and I've got like a whole wall on one of my 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 rooms downstairs full of computer games. Yeah, um, but that's all it is. It's just a trophy cabinet. And I mean, I say that occasionally. I do go back to old games if I've got. But then again, most of the time, if it's something I really, really enjoyed. I'll add it to my if, I, if it's available on Steam. I'll add it to my wish list, and whenever it's really cheap, I'll grab it for a couple of quid because yeah. I'd rather pay three quid to have it in Steam or the five quid or whatever than yeah. to get my Xbox down from the attic, which is where most of my consoles are now. I, I recently moved them all from uh, the wire hell that was downstairs. Um, I've got a, like a, a proper custom made cabinet that I put together that's got <laughs> loads of compartments for all of my consoles. Put it all together, put all the consoles in, and got been sick of all the wires and just archive them all in the attic now. Um, <laughs> nice. But instead of do, getting that, getting the, the console down from upstairs, I forgot to say, my mates asked me, can you bring your Wii round? Um, it's there. It's easy to get. It takes me five seconds to go in the attic, open a box, pull the box out, take it out. Inst I'd be arsed. I'd yeah. rather just click a button and play a game, you know? Yeah. A convenience. I think that that kind of says, uh, for me, the collecting side of it never really caught on because I prefer the convenience again, you know, like you were saying. And I, I think that's that's just generally the way a lot of things are going. You know, you don't want to buy a DVD or a Blu-ray. You want to, yeah. you know, turn your TV on, not have anything other than just like, oh, well, I've got a Netflix button on my TV. Great. You I've got that? Amazon Prime. I've got YouTube. Yeah, it, you want that data to be volatile rather than like static don't you it's just like, like just stream it to me for the internet and i'm done and then you can just you keep the copy instead you have it, it see it's... i think i think society has accepted that game the uh, media yeah. we don't own it, it oh, yeah. yeah i would agree because that i mean we, we previously used to think right we've got a dvd we own it now we don't actually own it we own a license for that and we have a copy of it physically you know we, we can we still couldn't stream that to a, a room full of people legally not that people don't do that but we're not allowed to we can't even show it to guests really i think there's some <laughs> there's some yeah there's some caveat there to say maybe to one or two people but if you 
you're going to stream to a large group of people. You're not allowed to do that by, by the license. Two people, Max. But, Mum, I want it's to watch it. Fuck off, Jimmy. Get back it's into your room. <laughs> it's Have you got more than three people watching on the <laughs> so three 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 police? Three police. Woo, woo. Okay, I've put this in microwave. <laughs> But yeah, but I, I, yeah. I, that's it. We've we just accepted it now, but I yeah, still yeah. haven't quite accepted that with, with console games. I still want a copy. I want to put a disc in and I want to play it. I don't know why, but I'm fine with PC games being in Steam, Epic Store, GOG, whatever. Hmm. I, I think One... for me, the, the only reason I'd prefer a physical copy of something is if I thought I might play it for like a couple of weeks and wanted to sell it on. But I other than it... that, Sorry, Danny. Go on. Sorry, no, I'm just I'm thinking about my next conversation point. Carry on. Carry on. Your next is oh, well if you no, if you've plotted something out, I'll no, let no, you no, talk. Because no. I was just gonna say, like, that's obviously a 3DS game. If you, oh my camera's shit. Anyway, it's Smash Bros. It's like a is physical it? piece of plastic, <laughs> and it's just I don't know, there's something about different types of games. I would say like Game Boy games like Pokemon, even more so. It's just like you have a fucking cartridge that has a a battery in it that keeps that game saves alive, like if I don't own that, then what well, are you... You're doing it. I'm going to do it. Oh, oh, no, I've not got a Switch yet. What's the... I, did, I, did, I did want to make one... DS. I did want to make one point. There is one very good reason to buy a Switch game physically, and that's because it tastes... Ah, horrible. <laughs> I remember this. Ah, oh, God. I remember this because my mate did the same thing. He's just what? like, no way. Switch games don't taste like shit. He's like, oh, God, it does. And he's just like, oh, is it... I'm assuming it's to stop children from like putting it near their mouth. It absolutely, it, Chris, did you not know this? No, what's this? It, it, like, me. There's a specific coating on the Switch cartridges which makes them taste like shit, basically. <laughs> it's, 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 de it. it's designed entirely to stop children eating the, uh, you know, the cartridge. Just try it. I've, I've just liked it. I've got a game Go running at the moment, though. Um, no, I know I'm scared. Like I feel like I feel like an idiot. I feel like this is a joke, like that I, an in joke. Do we see if the DS ones are like it? No, nope, the DS ones are perfectly edible. <laughs> it's probably because the Switch ones are so small that you could probably swallow Possibly. it. Yeah, I, I could if I wanted to. <laughs> if you wanted to, if I wanted to, but I, I might want to finish South Park the Fractured but Hole <laughs> in my digestive tract. <laughs> but right, yeah. so. I think yeah, my I point, think... it wasn't a good one, but I think my point there was just like, like, yeah, with games and stuff, it's, it's just something about it. You get a manual and you get, sometimes you get like art with it and it's like a whole thing. There's a whole process. You like unwrap it from the cellophane and it smells amazing. It's just like, that's mine now. And it's just different to like a DVD that gets watched once and forgotten about. Do you know what I mean? There's something, yeah, something going on there we did games, used to get physically. we did used to get fairly comprehensive manuals as you, you're right you know i've got a a, a skyrim map um to, yeah. to my left um that was probably the last big game that i bought on disc for for pc um mm -hmm. and i got loads of stuff with that you get like oh this is all the controls and this is all of the races in the game and this is what they all do and why the, and but these days you've got the internet Mm. But again, all that information is not yours. It's not owned yeah. by you. And if the website goes down, it's gone forever. But is that ever going to happen? We've got that many, that much redundancy and that much backup. I would say ever, you know, an EMP <laughs> could take us all out, couldn't it? Solar flares and pretty True. bad shit. Yeah. I think, the you know, that losing your uh, manual for Skyrim is the least of your concerns if the entire infrastructure of the UK was to suddenly disappear. I disagree. I could burn it for fire. <laughs> How do you that make that fire, manual? though? As long as you don't burn it onto a DVD. Stop right there, criminal scum. <laughs> you wouldn't download a car. Do -do 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 <laughs> By the way, right, the thing, that, the thing that makes me laugh about that, you know that, I don't know if it's still on, do we even have DVDs these days? On rentals, you used to have that, that DVD, well, you wouldn't steal a car, you wouldn't. <laughs> that right that is not on pirated versions of the dvds is it <laughs> so, what's the fucking point of you're putting me through this i can't skip past it i've bought the fucking thing and you're not letting me just come on mate no wonder people pirate shit i pirated <laughs> it why so i didn't have to say that shitty you wouldn't steal a car advert at the beginning of the fucking <laughs> dvd i paid the money and i pirated it <laughs> 
I'm anyway. sure someone's made that observation before, but come on, guys. <laughs> but I, I bet people have said exactly the same thing. Like, I download games on torrents so I don't have shitty DRM to deal with. Yeah. I mean, that is a, that is a problem, DRM. You know, I have to be logged into Steam whenever I'm, I want to play a game that's on Steam. There's nothing I can do about that, unless I happen to have got a Humble Bundle with a DRM-free version of it. But I wouldn't do that anyway, because it's not the convenient thing. And I like streaming shit downstairs on Steam. Epic Game Store, I can't do that with. Add it to my Steam library, maybe. No, mm. I've tried that. Anyway, I got the Epic Game Store because I wanted to try things like the Outer Wilds, some of the exclusives that are not the Outer Wilds, Outer World. World. Worlds. That, World. Yeah. that looks really interesting, that game to me, you know? There's loads of other ones as well, like, um, what's that building one? That is Satisfactory. Fact- yeah. I. I would still recommend that, particularly if you want to buy it before land, because I would like to play it with somebody else. Right, well, I'll get it, because I've, I've been waiting for a reason to get it, and uh, I'm up for that. Have you got it? I haven't got it. Matt? I, I've got it. I've, I've played right. I've played a, a decent chunk of it. So you're an epic store scum as well, then? I am. I'm, oh, right. I didn't... I'm, I'm a scab. You're a scab. Yeah, I said it. I scab. crossed that picket line. Scab. <laughs> Uh, right, anyway, so other news we've got to talk about is um, Steam has been uh, told by a French court that they are in contravention of EU uh, laws by not letting people resell or sell their games on after they've finished with them. Apparently, hon, we... Hon, hon. Sorry? Hon, hon, hon. We oui, oui, did You didn't do the oh. accent. Oh, he, ho, he, ho. Right, yes, I get you. Yeah. Right. No, that, that's Try and keep the ambulance. racism off this podcast, please. Thank that's, you very much. I'm, I'm not being <laughs> racist. I love the French. Well, I don't, but that's beside the point. Um, right, so... <gasps> <laughs> and to any French listeners out there, it was a joke. Bonjour. Bonjour. We're really Bonjour. good at <laughs> Um, right, so anyway, so a French court has ruled that Steam is in contravention of the EU laws by not letting people resell their games. What do you think about that? Do you think that's right? Because Steam are arguing back, saying we're going to appeal this because it clearly states in our terms and conditions that you are leasing the game. You are essentially renting it, which is something you said last week, Matt, actually. Hmm. Um, I kind of like this. I don't want to resell my games. Occasionally I get a refund if I don't like the game. I don't really want to resell my games. I want to build a library personally, but I can totally see how other people would want to. If they've paid 50 quid for a new release and they've went past the two-week period on Steam on, or they've played it for more than two hours, but they don't want it anymore, they could have got a physical copy of that. Yeah, but could there's they? always... There's always been that issue with PC games about reselling them. And, you know, it's, it's something that, like, secondhand PC games died a death with Steam anyway. And I... also, you can make a copy, a physical copy of that. And you've, or if it's an online um, registration of some description, then, you know, you can't resell that game anyway because mm. you've already registered the code for it. Even if it's not Steam, if it was like a proprietary one from years ago, I'm thinking of like a real tournament that kind of thing. I mean, I can see from like a consumer standpoint, there's a very good reason for us to want to be able to resell games. You know, like you say, if you buy a game, you might play it for, you might play it past the two hours or, you know, two weeks. You might play it for 10 hours, finish the game and think, oh, well, that was good. But, you know, I, I want some of that money back. Why can't I sell it on? And to be honest, I don't think that's necessarily a, a bad idea to sell it on because... If that's something that can compete against, um, you know, grey market key sellers like G2A and Kingwin and stuff like that, where you don't really know exactly where the games come from, at least if it's going through Steam and you're selling a second-hand copy of it, there's some legitimacy to it. So that that's one side I could see being good, but I'm not too sure. Sh- I, I don't know. From Like I say, from a consumer standpoint, I like the idea. And to be honest, I think if Steam set it up so that their marketplace could, you know, you could sell games, they'd probably still take a cut of 30% anyway. So I don't really know what they'd be complaining about because they'd still make money on a second-hand games market. I feel like... It's the administration, I think. Yeah, as well as... I feel like people would use that system... So for somebody who's got 200 games, for example, and like 
all right say if they had a minimum price of like oh like 10p or something for getting a game back like a lot of those games aren't going to just be shit ones there's going to be a lot where people are just sort of like continually recycling their libraries into credit as it were and then Steam would lose quite a bit of revenue for doing that, I would imagine. No, they wouldn't, because they're reselling the games on for more money than they... I mean, Steam could even add a markup to that. I, I imagine that's what they would do. Like, the marketplace now, I think, is it 30% they take if you sell items on Steam? If you sell so, games, they take 30% as well. So, yeah, it, even on a second-hand market with games, it'd still generate revenue, and the people buying it might not have bought the game from Steam in the first place. So... That's... Where does the worth come from, though, in this selling game? It was consumer worth. It's it's there's worth for both consumers for being able to get that some money back. So let's say you buy a game for forty quid, yeah. It's for argument's sake, you buy a game for forty quid. The resale value on that is set by the marketplace on Steam, uh, by people buying it and bidding for different prices. Maybe again, that's just an idea. Um, and so you sell it at twenty five quid a week later. You get that 25 quid back. Steam adds a couple of quid onto that to resell the game for you. And that game gets resold from the store page. The developer might get a little bit of money. I don't know. Maybe they won't. You'll get your 25 quid. Steam gets their couple of quid. The developer might get a bit. And then everyone's happy, basically. Steam get a little bit more money from that initial sale. But there does have to be some curation there. That does, and that's something that Steam doesn't do very well on is curation. No, nope. they, they rely too much on the user base, which doesn't always work out. And the, there was one other thing I thought um, for the Epic Game Store versus the Steam Store. It probably doesn't really resonate with you guys specifically because you're you're gamers more than game developers, but the game developers pay much less. Um, commission to Epic Games than they do to Steam. Steam is a 30% cut, and I can't remember what it is, but it's something like 12, 13, 15% or something like that for, um, for selling your game on Epic Store. But arguably, as an indie developer, you're not going to make as many sales on the Epic Store because it's not as popular, because people do boycott it and people there isn't as many users as there is on Steam. However, this does create competition, as Matt said a number of times. So we're... we're it's it's good we've got this competition from from all levels, but I don't know how far it'll go. I don't I can't I can't gauge it yet. But getting exclusives is definitely the way to go. Sorry, I kind of hijacked that. Then went back to an old point. No, it's fine. Yeah, you, it's you work away, Chris. We'll be here to support you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think um, going back to the uh, the point on uh, on the French courts that have. have have declared this. I, I personally don't know what to think about it. I'm, I'm torn. I think it could work. I think Steam need would need to put more effort in, or not just Steam, everybody. Because if it happens for Steam, the biggest, you know, the biggest PC retailer, it will have to happen. It. Yeah, it will have to happen for GOG. It will have to happen for Humble. And it who, sets a precedent. Yeah, and who would who would actually? Because things like Humble, they resell keys. Would it would it be humble that would be need, need to create that and res and allow them to resell because the consumers purchased from humble, yeah, and then it's been sold mm -hmm. onto Steam, or would it be Steam that would have to curate that? Would you be able to sell a humble game that you humble key that you've bought via Steam? All of these things have to be thought about, and this is where what creates a complexity in the administration around it as well. So think I'm, on, guys. I'm curious to see what happens with it. Um, Nothing. Probably also, does Steam nothing. even give a fuck just because some French court said we think you're in contravention of EU law? Well, they have to because it's law. Um, they in have to France, at least in the in the EU they do at in least. The EU, yeah. And I imagine their EU sales are not equal to, but probably you know not too far away from their US sales. Possibly, I mean, it's, it's a big market, it so and any ruling like this could you know severely impact how much money they make. 1% is a, is a big impact, you know, and this could be 20%, 30% of their revenue base. Uh, and then there's all of the developers as well that, that sell their games on there. I mean, would it be the developers that have to deal with the fallout from this? That's how it, and that's how Steam will end up wangling it if they have to. 
the developers will have to deal with the refunds and uh, sorry with the reselling of their keys but then do the developers get cut a cut you know all of this stuff needs to be worked out but steam have lots of lawyers they do they've got lots of money and lots Gab of weed gabon and his <laughs> stash <laughs> I oh, can't, yeah, every time I talk about him, I cannot get that, that meme out of my head. The, uh, <laughs> help Gabin hide his cush. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's legal in Washington now, yeah, so yeah. Smoke, smoke up, Gabin. Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> I'll roll a fatty way. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to stop calling him Gabin. I think it just triggers me. <laughs> Gabin, 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 Gabin. I think that should be a remix. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone will do it now. Oh, one of, one of our seven listeners. It'll be the fucking intro to next week's podcast. Gabin, 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 Gabin. You've heard uh, of Gabber. Now we've got Gabin. Right. I think that's. Shall we close up then? Yeah. It's getting silly now. It is getting. Silly. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, everybody. That is the end of our show. We'll see you next week on Resident Arcade. You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming and pontificate about how bad the Epic Store is. Sometimes please don't get mad at us for liking the Epic Store. I just want to point out, we don't actually talk that much in the public channels. There's tons of stuff that goes on in our host private channels. We're talking <laughs> all the time, but we never take the conversation <laughs> into it's, the public channels. That's it's true. It's mainly Danny and Chris just <laughs> shitting on each other. <laughs> it's mainly mainly me complaining about Danny never playing games, because he doesn't. Because <laughs> he doesn't. I have. Don I have War is can't... about 500 years old, mate. It doesn't matter. It's a game. I played chess. Not like Red week. Dead 2. It's an actual fucking game. So. I was playing rummy with me dad. <laughs> when we I was were playing fishing. what what did I play? I played with myself. It was a very good game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that all that is left is to say is goodbye. Thanks for having us. See you Thank later. Thank you very much. Ta ta. Ta ta.